The welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori, and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook, and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. So we're going to talk about all kinds of things today. And first off, we're going to talk about not a recipe, but just stuff that I've made for the Easter potluck. We had potluck at Danny's mama's house. So I'm going to take some chicken and dressing for the potluck. So what I'm doing now is I'm just getting my cornbread ready for my chicken and dressing. Now I do have a couple videos making my chicken and dressing. It's just a southern recipe and how we make it up here in the hills of Arkansas. It's just one of them traditional meals that we have at a lot of pot potlucks and holidays. We're having ham and roast. I'm making the chicken and dressing. I'm fixing to make some hot rolls. There's going to be a lot of good food at his mama's house today. His sisters are very good cooks, and their daughters are very good cooks. So there's always very good food when we all get together. So I'll link my chicken and dressing recipe down below in my description box below the video if you're interested. And also, my Lunch Lady Hot Rolls. I have a video on it too. And it'll be down there below the link if you want to go watch it too. I plan on doing another video making my Lunch Lady um, Hot Rolls soon. I've just had a lot of requests and sometimes you just need to redo some videos. So I'm just going to finish getting my cornbread ready for my chicken and dressing. We're also going to be making an apple cobbler. So I just about got all my rolls pinched out. And I will put the recipe down below for my lunch lady hot rolls. Or I'll put the link to the video anyways. Very, very good hot rolls. And it makes a lot. This recipe made 32 hot rolls. And they're so light and fluffy and so good. And I will be redoing a video making these rolls because I always have a lot of requests for them. Now I made this dough up and I let it sit in the refrigerator overnight. And then in the morning I'll make my hot rolls. I'm using two quart jars of my canned apples. Not apple pie filling, but just my canned apples. And I cooked them down with a little cinnamon and sugar. And I just made me um, a thick crust here. This is how we always done it at school. It's just a, a, a crust made with shortening or lard. And we always rolled out our crust kind of thick. And we made them in big... Um, big pans and we didn't waste any crust so you just kind of I just kind of double it up the side because that's my favorite part of cobbler or pie <laughs> is the crust Now I'm just going to make this fit here on the side now I'm just making a small apple cobbler because we usually have so many desserts I mean so many so I'm just going to make a small one and I guarantee you it'll be gone pretty quick and the apples that I'm using, I've got a video, canning apples, and these right here are about four years old, and uh, still good, make good pie. But 
we love our pies. We love our desserts, that's for sure. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon sugar on top, and we're going to put it in a 350 oven until it's good and golden brown. So we're making chicken and dressing, hot rolls, and apple pie. Here it is, guys. Here's my apple pie and cranberry sauce, my lunch lady hot roll. And y'all, somebody snuck a corner piece <laughs> out of the pan. And I don't know who done that while it was still hot with some good old butter slathered on it. But it just tastes so good. And I want y'all to know I forgot to take a picture of my chicken and dressing. This is my oldest son, Levi. He loves to play basketball and football. And there's Paul and his daughter, Brittany. My daughter-in-law, Tashina, and my son-in-law and brother-in-law. There's my brother-in-laws right there, David and Dennis, and a bunch of people. Family, friends, and we had such a good time. The kids hunted Easter eggs, and we just sat around and ate and got full and just relaxed outside. It was a beautiful day. I hope y'all had a beautiful day, too. So let's talk about sweet potatoes. So this is a purple Japanese, or it's called a Japanese purple sweet potato. And this is left over from last year's garden, and um, it has given me all kinds of potato, sweet potato slips. And what I'm going to do today, you can see there's some even down in there still. I mean, it's still producing slips. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking some of these off, some of the longer ones, and then I'm going to put them down in some water and let them root and while they're rooting I'm going to let the rest of these grow and just keep it growing and I'm going to get me a bunch of slips off this one sweet potato so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to carefully just kind of nip them slips off and you can see there's you can see the little roots and I'm just going to put them down in some water now, a lot of people don't even root them, but I always root my sweet potato slips before I plant them. Some people don't. But I've got a long growing season, so I'm never in a big, too big of a hurry to get mine out. In fact, I won't get these out until the ground starts to warm up. Because nothing is going to grow very good in cold soil. Now, I do have, you can see, this has even got one. I can separate that, and that'll be two. That'll make me two slips off that one right there. But I do have my, uh, you can see that still has a little root there. I do have uh, my cold weather crops, are, are they're out, like my, uh, that one's still got a root too. My broccoli... My Brussels sprouts, lettuce, spinach. I even got some cabbage out right now. You can see that's got a little bit of root. So I'm just going to stick it down the water too. All these that I'm taking off, I'll put in the water and let the roots uh, establish just a little bit better. But I, like I said, I'm not in no hurry to get these in the ground right now. And what will happen is this one sweet potato will still continue to make me a bunch of slips. Now I got the, um, I can't remember for sure. There's another set, little root. I can't remember where I got my slips out for this uh, Japanese purple sweet potato. Um... It was in it was one of the nurseries around here. I just can't remember which one. I think you can even order the slips maybe online. I'm not sure. But this is one of my favorite sweet potatoes. They're really sweet. Um and this is a good crop to grow because you can keep these in your in your pantry and your your cold storage. Um, in the dark in a cool dry place and sweet potatoes will last well I've got some that lasted to the next spring and that's what this one did and that's why I'm using it to make all my slips off of so you know a potato that I grew 
I think I may just leave that one on there. Potato, the sweet potato that I grew is still producing for me. It produces slips. That The slips are going to grow me a bunch more of sweet potatoes. So to me, this is one of the most um, necessity crops that you need to grow for survival because it'll just keep keep producing for you. So you can see the roots on that, and this is going to continue to make me a bunch more slips. So I'm just going to leave it in the water and uh, just let it continue to grow until it gets time for me to put my slips in the ground. And you see all them little ones at the bottom. And I'll show you how much it's still produced. And these right here, I'm going to let them root, let them get some really good established roots. But you're going to be surprised when I show you next time how many more slips I'll be getting off this one sweet potato. Now I want to show y'all how to fry up squash that I canned up several years ago. And this is my canned squash. And I learned how to do this from Charles from Old Alabama Gardener. He left us way too soon. He taught me a lot about gardening and how to can squash and fresh okra that you can fry up. And this is his recipe for it. But I'm going to put the link down below my video to his link of the video where he teaches you how to can squash and okra to fry. And let me tell you something. It works. So Charles from Old Alabama Gardener, this video is for you. And we do miss you very much. And this is my canned squash from about four or five years ago. Now, something that's four or five years <laughs> is going to have a different color to it. But you see how clear that water is. Uh, the squash is has turned, you know, a little off color, but it's still good. And I'm just going to pour that water off. And then I'm going to rinse it a couple times. And I know you're probably thinking there's a lot of seeds in there. And he tells you to take the seeds out. And I didn't do it. Uh, it's still good. The squash is still good when it's fried up. But I, next time, I will take the seeds out. Because this, this squash that I grew that year, it did. Uh, I never let them got very big, but they had a lot of seeds in them. So once you rinse it off, you just take them and put them on a... A dry dish towel because what you want to do is you want to get as much of the the moisture out of it and uh, I mean it's the same way as like if you're going to be making a fresh tomato pie you want to get that moisture out of there because it'll be just too wet so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of dry them off just a little bit with my towel I'm going to take just a little bit of salt, the sprinkle on top, and that's going to draw some of that moisture out. And I'm just going to let them sit here. Just like if I was, uh, like I said, if I was doing fried green tomatoes or if I was doing a tomato pie, I'd do the same thing just to draw some of that moisture out. I'm going to let them sit here for just a little bit. I know you're all thinking, how do you fry this up? And it's turn out so good. Now I've got me a little bit of cornmeal and a little bit of flour and a little bit of seasoning. First I'm going to dip it in that cornmeal. Then I'm going to dip it in my egg. I'm going to dip it back in my cornmeal mixture. And you can season it up any way you want to. I just put a little salt and pepper in it. And then we're going to fry it up. And here's some already fried up. And they fry up really pretty. They're not mushy inside. And they turned out wonderful. Now I do, um, I used to uh, 
put my squash in the freezer and I don't do it anymore. I can it up just like this for frying. And I do my okra this way. So please go to my information box below the video and go to his links that show you how he does that. It's very simple and it works so good. And like I said, this squash here is um, it's about four, four and a half years old already. And um, I had canned a bunch of it up. So you can. It works. There's the proof right there. And they taste really good too. So y'all try it. If you have a lot of squash or zucchini, you can do your green tomatoes the same way. Now Charles cuts his up. I leave mine whole, but either way works. Listen to your elders and you'll learn about the old ways. Here I'm just working on my flower bed. The purple irises are already starting to bloom. So pretty. My hens and chicks are looking good. And look what Mr. Brown and I were driving towards the other day. God's beautiful covenant. His beautiful rainbow. And then it wasn't much later that it started to rain. God bless everybody. We'll see y'all in a few days. Y'all be watching for us. We're going to have a special video come up next week. I'll make sure that y'all get notified of it. Y'all enjoy the solar eclipse, but be safe this weekend. We're going to stay home. We love y'all. God bless.